Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are ready to learn, so let's get started. Moments of inertia, as we talked about, is how easily something bends. So as we can see, we said in different directions, it bends a little bit different. What polar moments of inertia is, is how easily something twists. Now, twisting is something that you don't want in design. It's actually referred to as torsion. You don't want torsion in design because the code books don't really have any clauses against it. The steel code in Canada, for instance, basically says, if you have torsion, just make sure it's safe. They don't really provide any rules or regulations to guide you to make sure it's safe. It's one of those very complex problems. So as engineers, we typically design our structures to avoid any sort of twisting. Now, if you want to figure out the polar moment of inertia, it's actually going to be the integral of r squared dA, where r is actually the radius. So this formula right here is actually in polar coordinates. Now, if we want to, you guys are saying, Clayton, I, I've taken math. I'm not dealing with polar coordinates. I don't want to deal with it. Well, we can also express it in rectangular coordinates because we know that the radius squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. It's basically just a triangle. And if this is the case, we can actually substitute this into our formula above. And we basically have two different integrals. The first one is x squiggle squared dA, which is the moment of inertia about the y-axis. And then the second one is y squiggle squared dA, which is the moment of inertia about the x-axis. So if you want to, you can just add them together to find the polar moment of inertia. But the reason why we have to typically keep it in polar coordinates is a lot of the objects that we consider for twisting action are actually circles. So if we had a circle here with a radius r, we can actually find its polar moment of inertia using the formula above. Now it's going to follow basically the same steps as before, where the first one is we need to take that dA term and express it in terms of something else. So if I were to look at my shape here, what I can do is I can take a nice little slice around and we're going to say that this slice is located at a distance r. Now, if I want the area of my circular slice, it's going to be the circumference times the thickness. So 2 pi r, again, circumference, times the thickness, which we know is dr. We want that thickness to be basically minuscule. From there, we can substitute everything into our formula here, and we know that we have the integral from 0 to r, the radius, of r squared times 2 pi r with respect to dr, and then we get pi over 4 r to the 4. This is how you can find the polar moment of inertia. The only time I've actually ever used this in design was the torsion of steel structures, but that is so rare that you basically never ever see it. Moment of inertia though, the, the original one, you see that all the time. Radius of gyration, again, you see all the time. This one, not so much. So yeah, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.